Welcome back to another live stream. Hi, how is everyone doing? <laughs> As usual, before we go too far, just want to make sure that you guys can see me well, you guys can hear me okay. Uh, it has happened before, I go live and I talk on and on for like 5 and 10 minutes and I was totally silent or there was like uh, a very, very annoying echo in the background and people were threatening, Hey Robin, if you don't fix this echo, we are going to leave. It's so annoying. It's so unprofessional. So before I start replying comments, before I chat with you guys, before I dive into the topic, I just want to make sure that this live stream is going well, that you guys can see this feed, you guys can hear me well. Yeah, please type in the chat and let me know if you guys can hear everything fine. All right. Um, yeah, I just want to see some people are confirming already all is good we can see and hear all right thank you so much well today's stream uh, there's nothing much to talk about just I just want to do two things two things right number one I want to talk about that April Fool's crossover with my friend Mati Sulanto boy oh boy I had too much fun there was so much excitement planning that crossover videos I appeared on Mati's video Mati appeared on my video and we made it work and whoa it was just too much fun to make I hope you guys had as much fun as uh, watching it as we had making those videos right and the second thing I want to do is to introduce the membership program on my YouTube channel yes you can join my channel as a member and get some perks but first I want to welcome some new members and I want to say hi to people before I jump into the topic we have uh, Jason it's a friend Jason Leo if you are here thank you so much for joining the membership of my channel uh, watch Watch also has joined the membership. Thank you so much, Watch. Uh, there's so much I want to share with you guys and can't wait to get started. All right, let's get to the chat. Don says, Hi, Robin. Very good to see you this morning. Got my coffee. Thank you so much, Don. And that reminds me, time for my coffee here. Just want to show off my Canon L lens mark here. And it has coffee inside. Hmm. Ah, coffee is life. Alfonso says, Saludos desde España. Thank you so much, Alfonso. Nice to see you here. Viper Gamuka says, Good evening, Robin. Nice April Fool's video. <laughs> Good evening to you too, Viper Gamuka. I'm glad you enjoyed it. We have another member. Let's see if I can click it. Thank you so much, Rolf. Thanks for joining the membership. I'll talk about it in a little bit later, about the perks that you get, the special access, some privileges. I really, really can't wait to share with you guys. Thanks, Rolf, for the support. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, sorry, I skipped Entry All. Entry All says, hello from Frankfurt. Thank you so much, Entry All. Very, very nice to see you again. Gigi Walaf says, hey, Robin, I hope you are well. Yes, I am very well. Thank you so much. Let's do this. Yes, let's do this. Andrew says, hi, Robin. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Mati is in the house. Mati Sulanto. Mati says, hello, Robin. Hey, Mati. Come to make sure you did not switch after all. <laughs> no worries, guys. This stream is uh, being captured through the OM1. The OM1 is the streaming camera for this particular live stream. And I still have my EM1 Mark II here, which is my main camera. I still shoot with this. And this is my favorite 45 f1.8 lens. This camera is still pretty much alive. I just did a shoot yesterday. So much fun using this Olympus uh, EM1 Mark II, right? Gordon says, enjoy April first. Great team, Mati and Robin. Thank you so much, Gordon. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Jet Set Journeys, hey, how are you? Jet Set Journeys says, greetings, Robin, and chat from Thailand. Very, very nice to see you here. And Trish says, oh, it's good, Robin. I'm glad to hear that. Andrew says, we can see and hear. Thank you so much for the confirmation. Juan says, hello, Robin. One, one more again. One more time from work. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope I'm not too distracting to you. But today, I'll leave you in the background and see how it goes. I can see and hear you perfectly. Thank you so much for the confirmation. And please concentrate on your work. Don't let me distract you, right? George says, hey. Hey, George. Very, very nice to see you. Esmida says, hi, Robin. Hey, Esmida. How are you? This side towards screen says, Hello Robin, sound and good picture, perfect. Thank you so, so much. Vapagamuka confirms everything is good, very clear. Thank you. 
Tormot says, fine here in Norway. Thank you so much for the confirmation. Carl says, good evening, Robin. Hope you are well. Hey, Carl. Very nice to see you here. Thanks for being here. Fernando says, hi from Barcelona. Hey, Fernando. Thanks for joining the stream. Nice to see you. Rob S says, that Mati Salanto is a terrible influence on you, Robin. Oh, not really. Mati is a great friend. Uh, and the reason why we made those videos, it was because it was actually to celebrate our 10th anniversary of friendship. So we have been friends for 10 years now, right? Man, it has been a long time. And throughout those time, Mati has always been super generous in sharing his past experience, his knowledge as a real professional photographer. And I learned so much from, from Mati. And he's the one that is responsible to get me to start. He kicked my butt to start this YouTube channel. So you guys have a lot to thank Mati for, right? Jeff Painter. Hey, Jeff. Very nice to see you here. Hey, Robin, everyone. Very, very nice to see you. Alan says, hi, Robin. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for the confirmation, Alan, and nice to see you here. Craig says, hi, Robin. Sounds good. I'll only leave if you tell me to. Oh, thank you so much for that. I appreciate the support, Craig. Juan says, also, I purchased an EM5 Mark III this week after lots of your videos and should arrive next week. Congratulations on the purchase. So pumped. Can't wait to dive into it coming from a G7 will be my first Olympus. It is a huge jump from G7. The image stabilization is so much better. The viewfinder is better. Uh, the camera's uh, image quality is also better because it has a newer image sensor, the 20 megapixels versus the 16 megapixels on the G7. And yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I think you're going to enjoy it. And of course, the EM5 Mark III is also weather sealed, right? So it's a huge, huge, huge jump. Ed says, signing back in from Japan. Hope you are doing well, sir. The April Fool video was funny. Thank you so much. So this stream is actually sort of like a follow-up to that April Fool's crossover between me and Mati, right? So yeah, I'll talk a bit more about that very, very soon. Rob says, no wonder Sana Marin kicked Mati out of Finland. <laughs> so Mati, were you kicked out of Finland? HM Manro says, hello from the UK at 3 o'clock now. Uh, the clocks have changed. Rainy again, but just brightened up. Very nice to see you here, HM Manro. George says, I think you had more fun making it, but you always look like you're having more fun than I. Aww. Of, of course, I think it's very important to enjoy what you do. And I do enjoy making all these videos and I love photography, right? So I hope part of that passion shines through my videos. And all I want to do is just to share my passion with as many people as I can and encourage you to go out and shoot because I find photography so enjoyable. It has changed my life. I've, I've experienced so much joy and positivity from doing shuttle therapy sessions. I just want everyone to feel the same. You know what I mean? I just want to share with you guys, right? Rolf, hey, ah, I can see that your name is highlighted in green because you've just joined the member, right? So guys, if you join the membership of this channel, your comments will be highlighted. Your name is highlighted. So Rolf says, hi Robin, welcome from Germany. And Rolf, welcome to the channel's membership. Thank you so much. Daniel says, morning Robin, last night I discovered that Yongno makes a couple of micro four thirds cameras. Didn't know this, have you looked into them? I wouldn't recommend, <laughs> trust me. Maybe some of the lenses, even the lenses are questionable, but cameras, no. Please, please, please trust me. Don't, don't go to Yong No. All right, uh, I will stop on the chat here for a while. I'll pause on the chats and I will dive into the topic. I think I want to talk about the channel's membership first. I think that's more exciting. That's new. I started, I enabled the channel's membership yesterday. And all you have to do if you want to support my channel is to click the join button on my channel or I'll just give you the link here. Let me just copy the link quickly and put on the chat. Where is the chat? All right. Here is the link on the chat. You can click on it to join my channel's membership. It costs you about a cup of coffee or a little bit more than a cup of coffee. And you get some really cool perks. Number one, you get early access to all my new videos. So my new videos are published every Monday, right? Nine o'clock at night in Malaysian time. You will get access to new videos 24 hours earlier than everyone else. 
How cool is that? So being a, a, a member of this, cha this channel, right? If you su support me, you can see my videos before everyone else does in the world. That's number one. Number two, after I get more than 20 members on this channel, I think now currently we have 10. After I have more than 20 members, I will start a private exclusive members only live stream. <laughs> right? So now we have like, 100 people watching the stream. I have so many comments. It's hard to get to everyone. So there's limited interaction between me and people who really, really care. So what I want to do is to allow you to connect to me more directly. So when there's less people in the chat, we have more time to interact with each other and I can answer your questions. I can talk to you and I want that for you. Just for the price of a cup of coffee, right? And it's once a month, once a month, right? And number three, you will get priority for me to reply your comments. Priority replies to members' comments. So in any videos, as your comments pop up, I can filter them, I can see that it's from members only, and I can immediately reply a comment because, trust me, I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments every day because I have like, 300 plus videos now on my channel. So let's say I just get one comment on every video. I get 300 new comments every day, right? I have trouble replying to all comments. So if you are a member, I will guarantee that I will reply your comment first before I go to anyone else. How does that sound? <laughs> right, so all you have to do is just to click this link, which I have highlighted, it's in the chat, or you can go to my channel, any videos, you just click join, and you can become a member. And I can't wait to interact with you more, I can't wait to share more with you guys, and yeah, any, any help and support from you guys is deeply appreciated. And I'm not taking anything away from my channel. It's not like I, I don't give any new videos or I, I don't do live streams anymore. All my new videos are open to everyone to see, but members get to see them 24 hours earlier, right? And all my live streams are still gonna happen every week on Thursdays. This is public live streams. Anyone can come in, whether you're a subscriber or not, whether you're a member or not, you can come in, you can chat with me. I will do my best to reply to all your comments, but you get one additional live stream for members only every month if you join the membership, right? And I really want to interact with you guys more. So please, please support me. Now, if you, I understand not everyone have spare cash to, to spend and for some people, they, they do choose the subscriptions wisely, right? Because now everything is subscription. The next thing that you can support me is through my Amazon affiliate link. You can find it in the description below. You can find the Amazon link. You can buy anything on Amazon. It doesn't cost you more, but I do earn some commission from you, right? It's another way to support me. Or you can buy me coffee on the link up here or the description below or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. It's up to you how you want to support me, and I appreciate your support. All of you, you have been so generous. All of you have been so kind. You have actually carried me and allowed me to do a lot more on my channel. I've made so many videos. I've made so many live streams. Like This is a new microphone with a new uh, that cat filter, a new microphone arm, and I have this 4K capture card. All of this is from your contributions. So it's just one extra way for you to choose if you want to use this to support me because instead of just sending me money and you don't get anything in return, but just by the price of a cup of coffee, you get a lot of perks from this membership. All right, I hope you guys will support me. <laughs> and I have some members join. All right, Stephen. Hey, thank you so much, Stephen. Welcome to Photo Walk Buddies and welcome to the membership where we have another member has just joined. Let me just see, Hesham Manro, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. And yeah, I can't wait to share the early access with you guys. I can't wait to reply to your comments as a priority. And I can't wait to interact with you guys in a private live stream just for members. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna drink some coffee, all right? And I'm gonna get back to the chats. Hmm. Oh, we have another member. Dr. Harris. Oh my goodness, Dr. Harris, you're watching the stream. <laughs> How is Ramadan going, Dr. Harris? And it's Hari Raya next week. Hey, oh my goodness. Hey, Dr. Harris, we need, need, need to get the gang together and go out for a photo walk very, very soon after Raya. And thank you so much, Dr. Harris, for the help. And oh, Mike, thank you so much, Mike, for the help and uh, for the support on the channel. And I welcome to you to the membership. And yes, I can't wait to interact with you guys. All right, I'm going to go back to the chats. Right, 
Denise says, hi Robin, hey Denise, how are you? I just ordered a Nikon Z5 with a 2470 f4. I'm excited to try full frame. Yes, I think it's important to keep a, an open mind, especially when it comes to cameras and lenses, because uh, yes, I understand some people choose to be loyal to one brand or one system. That's fine, it's also your choice. And for me, whatever works for you, if you have found the right system to work with, then stay with that, continue using that, and I'm sure whatever it is, it can give you fantastic results results. But I feel that in my position as a photography YouTuber, as a camera and lens reviewer, it's also very important for me to expose myself to different systems, different formats, and see what they can do. So that when I say something, it's a little bit more objective, so that I can compare things in a more realistic manner, and I know what I can expect from each system, right? So yeah, I think it's very important that uh, I do try, keep myself updated with the latest cameras and lenses, even if I don't own them, but at least I try, right? One says, hey Robin, is the coffee lens mark weather sealed or does it leak coffee? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think it is weather sealed because if you splash something, the water will go in, right? So it's like, it's not preventing water or anything from going into the mug. So yeah, but it's not leaking. Definitely not leaking. Mati is talking to Rob S, no worries. Pentagram says, Hi Robin, I always question about the gear, but this time I would like to ask, have you ever met anyone from Poland and have you ever maybe visited Poland? No, I have not uh, met anyone from Poland and I have never visited Poland. I would love to though, but then again, like now, because technically I am still recovering from COVID. I mean, business-wise, I've never contracted COVID before. Uh, the three years of, of the COVID pandemic lockdown and everything has been taken a, a huge toll on my business. So I'm recovering. I'm doing okay. I'm doing perfectly fine now. I'm not struggling or whatever. It's just that I'm, uh, what you call that, building up the, the, the lost funds or, or lost resources. And it's very irresponsible if I just use a huge chunk of money and travel. But maybe one day, maybe one day, never say never. <laughs> Ton says, hi from the Netherlands. Hey Ton, very nice to see you. Uh, and yeah, <coughs> thanks for being here. Mati says, Robin, you are too kind. No worries, Mati. I can't wait for you to get back to Kuala Lumpur again. We got to do more coffee and uh, yeah, do more photo walks. Jerry Hukari says, hi everyone. Hey Jerry, how are you? Very nice to see you. Zach says, good morning, Robin. Now that you don't shoot micro four thirds, you should shoot mega, mega four thirds. The sensor is five times bigger than full frame. The camera body is way 10 kilos. <laughs> I would shoot with that mega four thirds if the body weighs 0 0.5 kilos. Liquid Drips says, hey Robin, Mati and all. Hey Liquid Drips, how are you? Nice to see you here. Anton says, hi Robin, with that video, I nearly got my OM system tattoo removed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you have an OM system tattoo? Wow, what a dedication. Mike Cruz says, hello, hey Mike, how are you? And thanks for joining the uh, membership program. Welcome to the membership. Roman says, welcome from Germany. Hey Roman, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Neil says, hello Robin and fellow microphone nerds. Hey Neil, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Claude Furt says, hi, can the Olympus EM1 live stream? I think it can. Uh, the EM1 has, you can use the Olympus, uh, I don't know what's the name now, hey. There has, there's a webcam uh, software, uh, I don't even know what the name is, and you can use it to, to stream. Let me, let me see if I can find the link. Just give me a moment, just see the link. Okay, I found it. OM, Olympus OMD well, Webcam bet, Beta. Right, uh, Olympus OMD Webcam, you can use this software to use your EM1. All you have to do is just connect through the USB cable which came along with the box, and then you can use your camera's live view as your live stream, right? I'm gonna give you this link here copy. So Clubford, if you look at the chat now, I'm going to highlight the chat. Go to this link here and you can download the Olympus uh, OMD webcam, right? All right. Let's get back to the chat. Hesham Maro says 11 now. 11? 11 what? Sorry, I can't, I don't understand that. But yeah, you can see Hesham Maro, your, um, 
Your name is Halato in green hair. That is so cool. <laughs> Xmina says, the private stream will be like OnlyFans. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> It'll still be a lot of people though, but we can talk about anything here. Talk about coffee, talk about cats, talk about the weather, talk about, I don't know, maybe not politics. I'm not very well versed with the world's politics, but yeah. Hmm. GG Wallaf says, for Wildlife, I use EM1 Mark III, EM1 X, EM10 Mark II for Macro 60. Prefer flip screen, EPL9 for everyday carry. No Wildlife and Lumix G9 is Wildlife. My Canon R690D 5D Mark 370. Oh, are too heavy now. You have like what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Like you have 9 or 10 cameras with you. <laughs> that is insane. Clifford says, please recommend a good lens, just got the EM1. Have no idea if I should be looking at Olympus lens or Panasonic. Well, it depends on what you want to do. It's very hard for me to recommend lenses because each lenses are designed for specific purposes, right? Let's say, for example, if you're going to get the 300 f4 or 150 to 400, that lens is designed for wildlife or burning. Or if you get the 60 or 90 macro, that these lenses are made for macro or high magnification shooting. So it depends on what you want to do. Or if you're shooting a lot of interiors, ar architecture, then I will recommend like 825 or 714. So if you know what you want to do or you already know your preferences, it's very easy to find these lenses. Unless you don't know what you want to do, you're still exploring photography, you're still figuring things out, then may I suggest the 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro. Right, so I think the Olympus 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro is a general purpose lens. It's very small, it's very light, it's extremely sharp, and it's weather sealed. We have a new member. All right, it's Entrick. Oh, hey, Entrick, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Thank you so much for joining the membership. I appreciate that. All right. Dr. Harris, I'm a member, but I still don't care. <laughs> you don't care about what? Oh my goodness, Dr. Harris, see your name is in green. So cool, hey. Alfonso says, thanks, Robin. No worries, Alfonso, I appreciate that. Mati is talking to <laughs> Dr. Harris. Seagull says, hi Robin, it's Seagulls from Australia enjoying the live stream. Thank you so much, Seagulls, for tuning in. Appreciate that. I appreciate seeing you here. Dr. Harris says, doing okay, photo after Raya, of course, yes. Uh, the reason I'm saying photo walk after Raya, I mean, in case all of you uh, don't know, is because Ramadan is a fasting month for Muslims, and I do have a lot of Malay and Muslim friends in Malaysia, and since it's fasting month, we don't ask everyone to come out uh, under the sun for photo walks, sweating, since they are fasting, they are abstaining themselves from drinking water until sunset, right? Uh, so they might get dehydrated and a heat stroke, considering how hot it is in Malaysia now. Uh, in Kuala Lumpur especially, this we have a heat wave now, and it's really, really, really hot. So yeah, that's why I say, hey, after Hari Raya, which is the end of the fasting month, it's a huge celebration. And after that, then we will all go out and maybe have a gathering. Yeah, maybe a photo walk as well. So I, I really look forward to that. Hugh says, I just bought an EP1 and purple EPM1 and it's all Robin's fault. <laughs> what did I do? Oh my goodness, there is a purple EPM1? I'm not aware of that. My goodness. Ah, I don't mind owning a purple EPM1, hey. <laughs> George says, Robin, please make the chat session available during rebroadcast. The chat sessions are always available during rebroadcast. I never disable them. If it's missing for some reasons, it is YouTube's fault. It is not my fault. I never disable the chat, right? Andrew Banner says, I downloaded the webcam software the other day, but not tried it yet. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not using the Olympus webcam software. I'm just going to be honest with you because there's a restriction of resolution. I think if you use the software, if you use the EM1, EM1 Mark II or any of the Olympus cameras, you're not getting a full HD out of the, the stream or the video feed. You're only getting like 720p. And I think in 2024, we are past full HD, anything. I think that's like a bare minimum. And I do want to stream at high resolution. Like now I'm streaming at 4K. So I actually highly recommend that you get, or anyone who wants to do live stream, to get a capture card, a video capture card, where you connect your camera's HDMI to the capture card, and the capture card outputs USB into the computer. So that 
by that using that you can have higher resolution like full hd or even 4k like what you're seeing through my stream here right and these capture cards are not expensive i spent for this one is only about 150 ringgit that's like 30 us dollars 30 35 us dollars around there yep Ooh. <laughs> Sujet Gabor I have no idea how to pronounce your name sorry hi Robin I used to shoot Olympus EMR Mark II since I departed I still miss it I was struggling in low light doing birds and wildlife but no other camera made me feel for it ever since strange I think EMR Mark II has a the way the grip was designed it wraps around your fingers perfectly even if you have a, a very large hand and everything just feels so natural it's so comfortable i think in terms of ergonomics and handling design the camera the best camera in the world is this em1 mark ii right that's just my opinion you can disagree with me one says robin is there an olympus app for smartphones to connect to the camera and share pictures to social media on the go if so how good is the app i use the panasonic and it's barely good yeah it's called oi share uh is it still the same after oim system took over i honestly have not used the software so I'm, i don't know if you are using android or uh what you call that or, or ios right but uh i'm gonna share the link to oi share uh, you can find the links to download relevant apps to your phone here. And I'm going to highlight the link to you one. So go to this link and you can find the app to download and this should connect your phone to your smartphone. It is compatible with both iOS and Android, right? You guys talk to each other, no worries. Pentagram says, I deeply feel you, Robin, are a connector between yourself and other people to Micro Four Thirds system. Like if you are going to leave this system, many people might follow and do the same. That's what I feel. Now, I, f I feel that as a photographer, it's, you're free to use whatever you want, right? So I am a photographer. I can use any camera and I should try different systems. And we should use the tool that is suitable for that particular job. So... I have been shooting with Micro Four Thirds for a long time and I know the cameras inside out, right? I can maximize its strengths and walk around the weaknesses and get the results that I want. And Micro Four Thirds has worked perfectly for me. I've never encountered any problems so far, but I cannot guarantee that I will use Micro Four Thirds forever. That is just, just the truth. I cannot tell you what will happen five years from now, 10 years from now. I don't even know if OM system is, is still around. Let's say that OM Digital Solutions and Panasonic decided to give up on Micro Four Thirds three years from now. They announced that, okay, we have had enough. This is not working. We are giving up on Micro Four Thirds. They just abandoned Micro Four Thirds. I will still continue to use it for some time, but as the support start to go away, and I have, let's say my camera, uh, there's some problem with my cameras and lenses and I can't send them for uh, repair and there's no new lenses and no new support. There's no reason for me to stay with the system, right? If it's dead, that's just one reason. And what if one day I encounter a client that says, hey Robin, we need a minimum of 36 megapixels for our whatever that they, they need the photographs for. And Micro Four Thirds, the highest megapixel count is only 24, 25 megapixels on the GH6 and the G9. And that's barely enough, right? 10 years ago, we already have 24 megapixels. And it seems like they are stagnating. So that's why I say there is a chance for anyone, not just myself, to jump ship. Maybe the current system is not good enough. Maybe they just want to explore. I don't know. There are many reasons, right? But as a photographer, you're free to use whatever you want. But having said that, I'm not going anywhere. Don't worry. Whatever you saw on that April Fool's crossover, that's just April Fool's. We're just having fun and Mati is free to blast whatever what he wants to say about me, all the dirty secrets, dirty secrets, right? And I have so much fun making a video on Mati's channel saying he hates Sony and all that. Uh, yeah, it's just an April Fool's, right? So for now, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still actively shooting with Micro Four Thirds for my jobs, for my personal photography, for my photo projects, everything. But hey, maybe five years, 10 years from now, I don't know what will happen, right? Yeah. Super Zero says, technically what makes the format Micro Four Thirds was the flange distance due to being mirrorless. So realistically, all the 35 mirrorless formats are actually micro full frame. Nah. It's also the sensor, right? The Four Thirds. First of all, the uh, aspect ratio being Four Thirds. And secondly, the sensor size, right? 
Meister says, Hey Robin, wondering if you use IS1 or IS2 when vlogging. I heard IS2 can introduce jelloing with wide angles like the 9th F1.7 on the EM5 Mark III, but IS1 has that crop. I use IS1 and that crop, you won't see the difference anyway, especially if you are moving, right? So if you are stationary, let's say I put the camera on a tripod, I use IS2 because there's no reason that I, I don't even need IS, right? The camera is on a tripod. I just put the IS2 just in case there's some vibration. So if I'm moving, if there's movement, right? If I'm carrying the camera and I'm holding with my hand and I move, right? Then I will use IS1. Yes, there is a little bit of crop, but that crop is negligible because that, what you call that, the pulsing, the, 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 the what you call that, the, 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 jello, the jello effect uh, of, of the stabilization without the IS one, it's just, you can't even fix that. You may be able to fix a little bit, but you'll crop even more, right? So yeah, I'll just use the IS one right from the camera. Freezer says, do you have any experience using Lumix G3? If you have, what is your thoughts? No, I have not. And it's like, I don't even have friends in Malaysia using Panasonic. That's the truth, right? Norm says, hi Robin, I moved from a 5D Mark IV to an EM1 Mark III. Very nice decision. There are so many pros and cons for both systems. The move to micro four thirds suits my needs extremely well. Traveling, I can carry more support gear. I think from 5D Mark IV, because it's a DSLR, if you move to mirrorless, it makes sense. So EM1 Mark III is a lot smaller, it's a lot more capable. But having said that, uh, Canon also has their own mirrorless system now, the RF system. They have the R, the R5, R6, RP, right? These are excellent cameras and Nikon, Sony, they all have mirrorless cameras now. So of course, uh, I would say that mirrorless is the future. I'm not saying DSLRs are not good, but if you want to improve or upgrade, of course, go to mirrorless. And EM1 Mark III is definitely way ahead of the 5D Mark IV. Zach says, do you have a favorite camera or lens you take for shutter therapy? Also, have you been working out? You're looking very fit in the picture you posted the other day. <laughs> that is an old picture. <laughs> like, I think one year ago, one or two years ago, maybe one, one year ago, because it was taken by my friend Azul. Uh, yes, I, I am still working out. Uh, it depends on different goals. Sometimes I, I'm in a bulking season where I want to put on more muscle mass. So I have to eat more, then I'll look a little bit bloated, right? I'm now in my cutting phase. So I do look a little bit more lean. Uh, I've lost quite a bit of weight. <laughs> and yeah, I can fit into smaller clothes now. But uh, yeah, it all depends on different goals. So I'll look a little bit different in a few different videos, right? Some video I look like a little bit bloated, some I look really lean. Uh, the favorite camera and lens for my shutter therapy, for if it's not, not for any significant projects. It's not for any uh, serious shooting. Let's say it's just purely for fun. I just want to go out, have fun, right? Shutter therapy, that's what it means. Bring your camera, go out, shoot, shoot and have fun. Then I'll carry the smaller cameras like the Panasonic GM1. I love GM1, right? I know uh, GM1 is not a very practical camera because it doesn't have a tilt screen. It doesn't have image stabilization. The handling is very bad because it's too small. It doesn't even have an electronic viewfinder. Uh, so, but GM1 is just purely for fun, I'm not expecting to have like fantastic results. Yes, I'll use GM1. But if I know that I want to do a little something serious, but it's not a job, of course, if I'm using a job, I'll use the EM1 Mark II, right? And my other like OM1 and all the other pro lenses, right? But let's say it's not a job, but I still want to be serious. I want to really want to get some results. Then I'll carry the EM10 or EM5 Mark III. The cameras are still very small, but you have a swivel or tilt screen, you have electronic viewfinder, and you have EM image stabilization, uh, which will definitely boost my confidence in nailing the shots, right? Yeah, so yeah, I hope that uh, answers your question, Zach. Hugh says, the purple is so nice. I don't even need it, but I had to get it. I know, right? If I see one, I will just nab it, if the price is right. Gordon says, following Zach's comments, I'm off to work out outside today. Have a great day all and look forward to watching later. Oh, thank you so much for dropping by, Gordon. And yeah, see you again sometime. Seagull says, nice to hear, Robin, no worries. You guys are talking to each other, no worries. Yumi says, hi Robin, nice April joke. Hope you are well. Yes, I'm doing quite okay. I hope you're well too. And yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed the April joke. Kairu says, hello Robin, hello Kairu, how are you? I recently made the switch from Olympus, from Sony to Olympus and have enjoyed it so much. I saw my Sony immediately. Long live Micro Four Thirds, yeah. 
I think people who have actually used uh, both Sony and Olympus, they'll actually know there's some things about Micro Four Thirds that are advantageous. I'm not saying that Micro Four Thirds wins in every single category, no, right? Like Sony, they have full frame mirrorless. Of course, the image sensor is larger. They get more resolution, dynamic range, and high ISO performance. That's not deniable. But uh, there are other things that Micro Four Thirds actually shine and they're smaller more compact the image stabilization is better there's some better computation of photography and overall the system is just better right yeah hesha maro says oh i share still i use it on android to post a few out of camera rushes from my animal shoots at lunchtime wow you shoot animals during your lunchtime what a life Com comes easier to set up with om1 but still not first time reliable but works yeah it is, I think like now we are in the year 2024, right? I would expect the apps to just work with zero bucks, but it still seems like people have connection issues. They have some errors. There's some problems there and here. It's like we have what, Wi-Fi 6 now? Wi -Fi, I don't know what Wi-Fi now. And the Bluetooth 5, 5 point something, 6, I don't know. It's like the technology is there, but the app development is behind. Like they just need to hire the right people to write the, the, the apps, right? These softwares. Jojo, hey, how are you? Jojo says, hey, Robin, I'm thinking of buying an old Micro Four Thirds camera. I saw a cheap uh, Pan EP1. What lens would you recommend? I wouldn't recommend EP1 to you, Jojo. I would recommend uh, EM5 or later. So, EM, okay, EM5, EM1, or EM10. And any of these cameras should be below 1,000 ringgit, right? Because they have better image sensor, they have image stabilization. Some of these cameras are rather sealed and handling is also better. And of course, uh, image quality is so, 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 so much better, right? Wolfie says, hey Robin, nice to see you live. Thank you so much, Wolfie. Nice to see you again. Sierra Pat says, hey Robin, has there ever been a need to update firmware on Olympus cameras? Can you tell us a bit about this? Thanks. Always, always, always update your firmware because Let's say there's new lenses, uh, the compatibility will be updated through the firmware. That's number one. Number two, if there's any previous bugs, any previous problems, you will, the firmware will definitely fix that. Some of them are very serious bugs. Number three, uh, new features. These firmware updates also introduce new features. Like for example, EM1 never had the live composite. The live composite was introduced in EM10, which was released after EM1. And it was introduced to EM1 with a firmware upgrade, right? Silent shutter as well. And all kinds of amazing features like the focus bracketing, I don't know, all these crazy features. And the firmware upgrade, especially for EM1 Mark II, I have the camera here. So the firmware upgrade three, which was the reason why I started this YouTube channel because there were so many improvements in the firmware three that it's very hard for me to write in my blog. I used to write on my blog. I still write on my blog, actually. I still have the blog. But uh, writing on the blog is very hard for me to, to to explain and to demonstrate how these new features work, right? And just by showing a, a 10, 15 seconds clip of that feature, you see, ah, oh, visually, you understand how these features has improved or how it actually works in real life, right? That's why, that's the reason why I started this YouTube channel because of the firmware 3.0 update for the EM1 Mark II. Always, always, always update. Like there was uh, an outing organized by Olympus, which I led many, many years ago. I think that was uh, for the, 300 f4 lens right so we brought the cameras brought the lenses of course they want to use their own camera they have olympus cameras and i told them before the outing in the pre-briefing that you have to update your cameras firmware so that you can use the new lens guess what nobody listened not even one person updated the firmware on the spot when they used the lens the image stabilization doesn't work. The autofocus was wonky. They were like, what's wrong with this lens? This lens is bad. I said like, what's the formula of your camera? They say, oh, I didn't update it. I said, why did you didn't update it? They say, oh, I didn't think it's important. I told you to update your firmware. Oh my goodness. Like anyway, yeah, please update your firmware. <laughs> All right, so we have a super chat. Uh, from Don. Thank you so much, Don. Don says, My Mighty Four Thirds is easier to fill image frame with birds, especially with telephoto lens. I found more difficult to fill image frame on my full frame system. Yeah, because there's more crop, right? You have this more reach. That is very true. And thank you so much, Don, for the generous support. And uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you guys, whether you have joined the membership or you've sent money through Super Chat or you send money directly to me through uh, PayPal or the Buy Me Coffee. I appreciate 
appreciate your support. All these contributions will fund my next video and will help me to improve the experience of this live stream and of course uh, the production quality of my future videos, right? So thank you, thank you so much. We have another super chat. This time it's from Outsider Outsider. Outsider says, no comment, just appreciate work. Oh, thank you so much. Keep it up. Actually hoping for OM1X. I don't even want new features. I just want the handling as a bird photographer. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. And yeah, maybe uh, OM Digital Solutions will release the OM1X. I don't know what, honestly, I have no idea what they are doing. It seems like they don't even know what they are doing now. <laughs> but OM1X does not seem like a bad idea. Thank you so much. Right. Okay, I am going to stop here for a bit. I'm going to uh, drink my coffee and we're going to talk about that April Fool's crossover. <laughs> mm. So, why did we do the April Fool's video? I, th I think, uh, so Mati Solanto, which is an amazing friend, he escaped the winter, the harsh winter of Finland. He told me, uh, of course, I've never been to Finland, so I wouldn't know. He told me it gets down to like minus 25, 30 degrees. That is crazy. I think the coldest I've ever been was minus 10 and I barely survived, right? So he escaped the winter of Finland and he came to Malaysia and he stayed in Kuala Lumpur for, I think, two months. It was from November to January. And during that time, uh, we were supposed to do like a, a, a collaboration video, like maybe he appear on my channel to share some tips and tricks, or maybe we will argue about some photography points, or maybe we can do some uh, photography shooting together, right? So we were working on these points, and it, but we couldn't make it happen because uh, I was extremely busy. It was, it was my fault. Uh, I had photography assignments so I do some page shoots and uh, I have uh, other personal things that I have to take care of so I did not have enough time to allocate to make this happen right but uh, sometime in January we were sitting down together in a coffee place and we were thinking hey why don't we do something for April Fools and we can go crazy <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, hey, how about I appear on your channel and you appear on my channel? And it's like, yeah, why not? Like, you know, we are friends, right? And yeah, and then I can say things about you that's not true because it's April, April Fools, right? We just use April Fools as the blanket excuse to just say what ever that we want to say and we will try to make it as confusing as possible right they were like trying to, to bounce ideas back and forth what to say i say yeah how about i say let's say i've dumped micro four thirds and let's say i move on to full frame yeah then he says yeah yeah then he say i can say that he, he has problems with sony he hates sony colors and you know he has secretly been shooting with nikon and because he, nikon was his first camera that he used as a professional photographer he has always trusted nikon and he hasn't had a nikon content on his channel for a while so that would work we were like wow you know and at the same time i also was already looking into getting a z5 just for just for fun so this is a z5 you know why i can afford to get a z5 for fun this is a used z5 unit it's still a very good condition it costs let me do the calculation before i, I get it wrong my mental calculation is not as good as it used to be. But let me just quickly do the calculation. All right. Okay. It costs one fifth of the OM1 Mark II new. <laughs> I'm not, not joking. The cost of this uh, Nikon Z5 body only is 20% or one fifth of an OM1 Mark II. That's how I can afford it. <laughs> of course, right? If it's expensive, I wouldn't be crazy spending my money, right? And if I don't like it, I can always sell it with maybe a minimal loss, right? So yeah, I've been looking to get a Z5. Say, hey, you know, with the new camera, then we can do something really, really, really crazy. So that's when the idea started. So of course, Mati left uh, Kuala Lumpur in January. To, he went to Australia. Uh, he was in Melbourne, Australia. And he came back uh, late March. And we have one week before the April's full. And we thought we, we sat down together to finalize our draft, to say what we want to say. And yeah, and then we filmed together. We made the video. And it, is, it was just so, 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 so much fun. I wish you guys could have seen 
the 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 amount of laughter and the amount of outbursts that we had uh, while we were planning, while we were filming together, and yeah, and uh, the idea is basically just to say as many things that will trigger people. Like I know a lot of people will be triggered if I've given out a microphone third system, and I know in, uh, Mighty Solanto as well because he's been supporting Sony, has been using a lot of Sony equipment, and then suddenly he says, "Oh, all this Sony equipment, I'm lying about all the things I've said about it." <laughs> just want to play with people, right? And we we also anticipated that a lot of people some people not a lot some people may not even watch the video this is a problem these days a lot of people they just look at the thumbnail and title and they went into the comments and they write an angry or like oh you know you are such a traitor how dare you i believe in you i'm, I'm subscribing i'm like dude at least watch the video, or at least look at the other comments, or at least look at the descriptions, right? No, they just immediately go to the comment, and some people are so angry, and I mean, I guess it's also a good time to have like a refresh, to filter out the people that are not supposed to be here, because if you are truly here, and you truly support me, you subscribe to me, then you will know that I'm not that kind of person, right? <laughs> Like, is it so so easy for me to deceive you? Like, man, like faith and loyalty means nothing these days. Anyway, so yeah, we, we did the video, it was published, and we had so much fun. And yeah, I just I just wish you guys you guys could have seen how we made everything happen. <laughs> Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I don't know if you have watched both videos. Uh, so on my channel, Mati, of course, appeared and he said all kinds of trash things about me. And then I went over to Mati's channel and I, of course, I talk about the Nikon Z5 and I talk trash about Mati. So you need to watch both to really appreciate the, all the, the things that we have done. <laughs> all right, I've got to go back to the chat. Hmm. Clapford says, I don't have a USB cable anymore. A another way to update the firmware, you have to find a USB cable. There's no other way. Or is there a way to update through Bluetooth on the OI share? I heard there's a way, but I've never explored that. Hey, Mike Cruz says, you guys are talking to each other to Sirapat. No worries. Rob S says, spot on Robin. I still watch Peter Fosgaard and Mati Sulanto and we'll watch you if you try another system. <laughs> no worries. I'm not going anywhere, Rob. I'm still shooting with Micro Four Thirds. Arwa says, hi Robin. What is your suggestion between 714 and 8 to 25? I would personally lean to, oh, wow, the USB microphone, there's some audio drop. I just noticed. Is my audio okay? I hope my audio is fine. I hope it doesn't drop so much. Anyway, uh, Arwa says, what is the situation between 714 and 8 to 25? Now, uh, if you're doing pro jobs, like if you're dealing with low light situations and if you need as wide as possible, then get the 7 to 14. Because 714, uh, it has f2.8, f2.8 versus f4, you can lower down your ISO. So instead of using, say, ISO 3200, you can use ISO 1600, right? And we all know that micro four thirds, you lose a lot of dynamic range in high ISO as you increase the ISO numbers. So, and if you want as wide as possible. If you don't need it so wide, and if you want versatility, you don't want to be stuck at wide angle at all the time, you want to quickly zoom, you don't want to change lens, uh, you want to quickly zoom to, say, 20, 25 to get out of that one angle distortion distorted perspective right uh then the 8 to 25 is a, a good choice and yeah if you can work with the f4 then or if you don't want the lens to be too big because 714 is larger than the 8 to 25 uh yeah depends on your preferences but if you want as wide as possible if you want uh if you're shooting in low light 714 is for you i hope the answer to your question arwa Kato says, I switched from Sony to Micro Four Thirds a few years ago and I'm quite happy with the results. Oh, I'm glad that you are happy with your Micro Four Thirds. Let's see. Anthony says, I'm so frustrated with OM systems. Nikon has 180 to 600 with internal zoom and it's 1200, 1200 ringgit cheaper than the new 150 to 600. Yeah, it's kind of strange, right? Like the pricing. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with them rebadging a lens because I understand that as a new company that just took over Olympus, right? Uh, they may not have the resources to redesign the lens from ground up. Like, I understand, take your time. But like the pricing strategy is very, very questionable. <laughs> Kumar says, hi Robin, since nice to see and hear you. Thank you so much, Kumar. Thanks for being here. 
Meister says, any lenses that have piqued your interest lately? Lately, I'm looking at, uh, I'm trying to find a cheap Panasonic 20 f1.7 just to make a content, uh, do some shutter therapy, maybe a POV video with it, share some of my thoughts about the lens, and then I'll sell it off. I don't intend to keep the 20 f1.7, but I haven't found one at a good price. Everything is so expensive these days, even in the used market. Super Zero says, follow up, then what is the actual difference between the four thirds format versus micro four thirds, if not for being mirrorless and the related flange distance? Four thirds versus micro four thirds is the removal of the mirror box. So four thirds is a DSLR, right? DSLR has a mirror box and a pentaprism for the optical viewfinder. So what they do is they rip out the mirror box and the optical viewfinder and they replace with an electronic viewfinder and of course, they put the lens nearer to the image sensor, right? I hope that makes sense. Four thirds is a DSLR. They move to micro four thirds because micro four thirds is the first DSLR in the world. Being a DSLR without the restrictions of the moving mirror, you can not only make the camera smaller and the lens design smaller as well, but you can increase the, all the possibilities of technology like computational photography, using the sensor, you can stack the sensor quickly like focus stacking, uh, HDR, uh, live ND, live composite, all these are done possible without the mirror. Of course, the burst is also a lot faster. We have like what, 100 frames per second now these days, right? Yeah, everything is also like the stabilization, everything works so much better without the mirror box. Autofocus as well has been improved so much by removing the mirror box. <laughs> Sixthus Backmaster says, Robin, I have maxed out my Micro Four Thirds kit and have all the lenses I need from the system. I've just bought a Sony A6700 and I'm exploring email lenses, a PSC and full frame and have no Micro Four Thirds equivalents. Yeah. Also, like if you get another system, it's also good to get something else. Like it doesn't overlap with what you have. Maybe there's like, like for me, in whatever system that I have, I must get a 15 millimeters equivalent, right? So I get a 50 first, then whatever else will be something that is not overlapping with what I ha already have with my Micro Four Thirds system. Norm says, shooting in Micro Four Thirds, I do tend to be more conscious about cropping my shots more precisely in camera. But I feel that uh, this, is, this is relating to shooting discipline. Shooting discipline should always be there regardless of whatever formats that you, you're shooting, right? Uh, shooting discipline means that you get everything as, as close to what you want in real life while you're shooting and you do your best to get it in camera, right? Uh, that includes exposure settings. You don't severely underexpose or overexpose your image. That also includes framing, like straightening of the image or how close it is to your final framing. Shooting discipline is very important. It's something that is not talked enough. Maybe I'll do another stream to talk about the importance of shooting discipline. I feel that a lot of people neglect this. They don't pay enough attention and they don't care enough when they shoot and then they make some mistakes which cannot be fixed or some may not be fully fixed in post-processing. Arwa says, I quit EOS and jump into OM just this year. Really happy and enjoy shooting photo again. Yeah, welcome back to uh, Micro Four Thirds. Burana says, good evening, Robin. Good evening, Burana. How are you? Hmm. Javi Photo says, why quit the best digital photo system? That would be nuts. Who is quitting the best digital photo system? I don't remember anyone quitting. Right. All right. Wolfie says, Robin, I found my first Micro Four Thirds lens that gives me the look and style that I used to get with my A7 Mark IV and Sony 85 f1.8 and Tamron 7800. AD f2.8, the Sigma 56 f1.4, and I love it. It's a completely different lens, hey. <laughs> but if you love it, then of course it works for you. That's, that's great. Anthony says, I'll be excited to see OM systems to bring out an all new 5200 f2.8 to replace the older 40 to f2.8 lens, which does not have IS. But have you used the 40 to on any EM1 bodies? I'm not talking about like pan cameras or even the EM10, EM1. Whether it's EM1 Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, EM1X or the OM1, OM1 Mark 2. If you have used the 40 to 150 at any of these cameras, if you still have them now, try to zoom in all the way to 150, right? Maintain your ISO, fix it at ISO 200 and see how far you can stretch. I can guarantee you can shoot like one tenth of a second, one fifteenth of a second, no problem, handheld. And if that's true, if the image stabilization is so powerful for the 150 millimeters, 
I would rather have the body image stabilization than the lens stabilization because if you add the image stabilization in the lens, that will increase the size of, I don't know, 30, 40% because you need to allow for the, the glass to move, right? But increasing the size and weight, that makes the micro four thirds lens less appealing compared to competition. That's our main struggle and complaint that we have on these live streams recently, right? The micro four thirds lenses are getting bigger and then the uh, competition is getting smaller. So I would rather have like 5200, no IS, I'm fine with that. But if you're talking about 300 millimeters or 100 to 400 or that 150 to 600, yes, because at the longest end, the longer you go, the more critical it is to have the lens IS to compensate said for the yo and wait yo and pitch anyway <laughs> to compensate for that right yeah Serpa says following my previous comment on the firmware update could you make a tutorial video for it I've got an EM10 Mark IV and have no idea how to do the update it's very easy so the USB cable that comes with the camera in the box take out the cable connect your camera to the computer make sure you have a uh, OM Workspace, download it, the OM Workspace uh, software, and then just follow the instruction. It's as easy as that, right? And I don't think it's necessary to do a, a tutorial because you can find this inf information whether Relance for EM5 Mark III added up ordering secondhand 12 to 100 F4. It should arrive in one to two days. Hope it will be as good as in reviews. The 12 to 100 is an excellent, excellent lens. No question about it. Uh, in terms of image quality, it's way ahead of the 14 to 150. Love the lens. F Choi says from Texas, USA. Hey, how are you? Robert Key say you can update via or iShare. Yeah, I heard about that, right? So yeah, if you don't want to use the cable, all you have to do is just connect your camera to your phone. You can update the firmware from there. Jan says, I also own a Nikon Z5. How do you like the colors from this camera? What color profile are you using? I shoot in RAW and I use my own color profile. And honestly, the colors, eh, one of the least favorite from all the cameras that I'm using recently. PH says, audio is fine, thank you. Neil Division says, has there been any testing on the OEM Mark II low light autofocus yet? Hopefully it doesn't have the same problem as the original. I've seen some tests on the forums, especially the peer review forums. Unfortunately, the problem is still there. Morris says, I had to sell my Olympus 12 to 40 and 40 to 150 f2.8 lenses, so have been using all vintage lenses for now. However, so the Easter offering on Olympus for the 40 to 150, 409 pounds, so jumped on it. Oh yeah, go for it. I think the 40 to 150R is an excellent lens, and if you don't need to shoot in low light, if you have plenty of light to work with, that lens is so tiny, it's so light, so small, and yet it reaches all the way to 300 millimeters equivalent, and the sharpness is actually very, very decent. So go for it. We have a new members from Van. Thank you so much, Van, for the support. And very nice to see you. Van is a fellow photographer. He's an amazing, amazing photographer. He also shoots with Micro Four Thirds system. And yeah, I will go to Van's channel. You guys can check it out. Let me just find Van quickly. All right, I found the channel. I'm going to copy the link. You guys, please go to Van's channel. It's in the chat now. I'll highlight the chat. Please go to his channel and support him. Subscribe. You will find some videos with me in it. I think one of his newer videos, you can find me in it. <laughs> so yeah. Blaine says, Hi Robin, just wanted to say the Olympus 75 f1.8 does in fact rule. Yes, that's my favorite lens. In fact, I made a video to talk about it and say that's the lens that stopped me from going full frame. Been using it for travel and park strolls and big family events. Thanks for introducing me to it and they need a weather sealed version. Yes, we, not just the 75, right? All the prime lenses, the 12 f2, 70 f1.8, 25 f1.8, 45 f1.8, and 75 f1.8. All these lenses they need a new updated version with full weather ceiling. That's correct. Daniel says, Hi Robin, regarding the last live stream, you get the right framing, but you don't get correct depth of field preview on DSLRs. Aperture is faster than f2.8. You, so you can't manually focus prime lenses. Okay. There is a depth of field preview button, right? Hmm. 
I have choice says, hi Robin, follow up on my chat in previous session. I made a typo. I bought an Olympus EM1 Mark III, not OM1 Mark III. You are right, using lens adapter is sluggish on autofocus. Thanks again. No worries. Yeah. Video is frozen for a minute. Is the video okay? I saw the audio was frozen. So is the video okay now? Let me check the connection. I hope everything is fine. It says excellent connection. Uh, there's CPU use is 1%. Connection is fine. Drop frames is 0%. Everything is okay. I hope everything is okay, hey. In Guild says, will you consider trying the Pentax K1 with the limited FA lenses? K1 or K01? K01. Because I have the K01. I don't have the K1. If you're asking me to buy a Pentax K1, how much is the Pentax K1 now? Let's say Pentax K1. How much is it in Malaysia? Price. Pentax K1, K1. I think it's going to cost like $2,000 US or something like that. I don't have that kind of money to spend. As Mida says, exactly. I prefer image stabilization in camera than image stabiliz stabilization in lenses. It only makes them more complex and likely to die sooner. My most durable lenses are those simple K-mount lenses with use of autofocus from camera motor. Yes. Mike says, in 2017 Eclipse, I shot video on my EM5 Mark II of the landscape as the shadow fell. I can see the exposure changing in steps. Any tips to smooth exposure changes? I will try again Monday. Why is the exposure changing in steps? I don't understand. Or maybe you have set the exposure to change by, uh, by aperture, right? Maybe it's, you can fix the aperture and float either the ISO or shutter speed because aperture will, the way the lenses open is like f2.8, f4, sorry, f2.8, f4, f5.6, right? so there's like, it, ch it changes. But if you change it with the uh, shutter speed, maybe it's a lot smoother. I'm just guessing. Time check is one minute, one minute past 11. I am going to drink some water <laughs> and I am going to share a set of photographs. Yes. Ah, I got to stay hydrated. Hey, how about the video is okay? Let me, let me check the newer comments. The video is okay, right? Yeah, okay. Hmm. Got to stay hydrated. I'm going to drink some coffee. Hmm. All right, we have 128 people live here. And before I share the photos, uh, sorry, I wanna apologize first for some of you who have been here since the beginning, because I do want to talk about the membership again, right? Because uh, a lot of you have just joined. So I have just introduced the membership for my channel. I enabled it yesterday. So you can join my channel's membership to support me and you can get some really interesting perks in return. Just by spending about the price of a cup of coffee, that's $5.99, you get three things. Number one, you get early access to all my new videos. You'll get 24 hours earlier access than everyone else. So whenever I release a new video, you can watch it first before everyone else in the world. How does that sound? <laughs> Number two, we will have a members only exclusive live streams. That is when we hit 20 or more members, right? I mean, there's no reason to have a, a private live stream. We only have like two or three members. So once we hit 20 members, I will do a members only live stream once a month, right? And the reason I want to do that is because as you can see here now, we have 143 people online and I received so many que uh, questions in the chat, so many people commenting and I'm trying to reply to every single one. So we will have a private live stream where you can interact directly with me. We will have me more <laughs> with you. I can spend more time with you on the chats and yeah, you can ask me more questions. We can interact more in the members only private live stream. And number three, priority on comment replies. So if you comment on any of my videos, I will find you in the filter and I'll reply you first before everyone else. I receive hundreds and hundreds of comments every day. It's not very hard to believe. I have more than 300 videos on this channel. Let's say I receive one new comment in every, new every one of the videos. I will have more than 300 comments already. And it's very hard for me to get to every single comment. So if you, are a member, and if you commented, I will jump straight to you and reply to you first. <laughs> How does that sound? 
you have more exclusivity, you will be uh, treated uh, in more priority, right? So yeah, uh, please do support me uh, by joining the membership. I will find the link again. Let me see the link. You can use the join button or you can go to this link that I put in the chat here and can directly join just for $5.99 per month. Yeah, and we have a new member who has just joined, Skoidat. Thank you so, so much. Skoidat, appreciate that. And there are a few other ways that you guys can support me besides the membership. Of course, you can buy me a cup of coffee. You can send money directly to my PayPal. Of course, everything is still there. And if you don't want to spend any extra money, you can use my affiliate links on Amazon or B&H. Anything you buy from B&H and Amazon, uh, I will earn a little bit of commission. And I think it's just 2% of the amount of money you spend. And yeah, that can keep me going, right? So all this helps me to fund my resources to publish newer videos and improve the production quality of whatever that I'm doing here on this channel. Also, I'm not taking anything away from this membership because yes, I've introduced the membership. I'm giving something extra to you, but all the videos I will still publish every week, every Monday, there's a new video. Every Thursday, there's a public live stream. The private live stream is once a month, right? All right, let's get back to the comments. I'll drink some water first, just to stay hydrated. <laughs> ah. Hmm. Pinnacle Pit says, Robin, you've been stranded on an un in uninhabited desert island with your EMR Mark II and eight charge batteries, but no lenses. You find a manual lens with a four thirds mount. What are you going to do? I will whip out my smartphone and take a photo. <laughs> I would rather have the autofocus on my smartphone than no autofocus on my camera. Samuel says, after some works with the Eamon X, some curiosity, tripod high res don't recover highlights like original RAW and handheld RAW. And high res are exigent with lens. I discover a light decenter in my 12 F2. Yeah, because it's high resolution, right? So if there's any problems in your lens, like if there's any issue, any lens flow, it will amplify by the more pixel count, right? And you said tripod highlights don't recover highlights like original RAW. Are you shooting in RAW? And how are you editing your RAW file? These are very important questions. Richard says video is okay and audio too. Thanks Richard for confirming. The Thinker says I've just upgraded my Panasonic GM1 to, to the EM1. Any recommendation recommendations on travel lens? One a light one, preferably from used market. Love your Afro, Afro food jokes. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And I appreciate that you liked my Afro Fools, Fools video, the crossovers with Mati. Uh, I don't know what lenses you already have. And I assume you have the 12 to 32 from the GM1. If you have that, keep that. I also don't know your shooting style, how you shoot and your preferences. I also don't know what you shoot during your travel. Do you shoot people? Do you shoot birds? Do you shoot landscape? Do you shoot insects, right? So all this will affect the choices of lenses. If you shoot insects, during your travel, some of my friends do, they explore some uh, exotic locations, go into the forest, find some really strange looking insects. Then of course, carry a macro lens, right? Uh, do you shoot birds? It's some of my friends, they travel just to find the birds in that country they can found there, right? They will need lenses like 100 to 400 or 300 F4, right? All these lenses, the longer reach will help you to get to the birds. Uh, I don't know how you shoot your photographs, so it's very hard for me to recommend. Like for myself, if you're asking me, I can speak just for myself. If I travel, I'll probably carry the GM1 uh, with a 12 to 32, and that's it. I'm, I'm fine with it. If I want to do some street photography, maybe the 25 f1.8, and I'm happy, right? <laughs> so yeah, if I bring the EM1, same. I'll probably carry the 12 to 32 and 25. Yeah, it all depends on what you do. F. Choi says, and bought an Olympus 12 to 40 Pro after viewing your video. In addition to 45 and 75 f1.8 primes. Love them. Now I have a collection of two EM5 and EM1 as a result of watching your videos. Oh, I am so innocent. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to drink coffee to that. <laughs> hmm. Do you enjoy using them though, F. Choi? I hope you do. Hey, and yeah, welcome to Micro Four Thirds. Padre says, let's do this. Yes, let's do this. 
Santix says, hello, hey Santix, how are you? Very, very nice to see you here. Yeah, Santix, you asked how to join a member, right? I gave you the link already. So Santix, I'm going to highlight the link again. So this is the link, Santix, if you want to join the membership. Chuck says, nice Canon lens. I bought one for my brother, a Canon fan. He sent a picture of it in a dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, the Canon lens can survive the dishwasher. Hey, <laughs> just going to show off the Canon's lens. Yeah. Mm. Santix says, Cameron Highlands trip was fun. Took many photographs. Using Micro Four Thirds allows me to carry multiple lenses. Yes, you can just carry like a sling small bag and you can fit like four or five lenses and maybe one camera and still like weighs, I don't know, less than two kilograms, right? Rich says, late to this, just got my first Micro Four Thirds camera after the G80 won in my comparisons between that and the full frame D750. Still second guessing a bit, but I think the weight will turn into a massive plus as I go. Like, don't worry so much about uh, what you will miss because of course the Z750 is a full frame and as it has a full frame sensor that has more dynamic range and better high ISO. You cannot deny that, right? There are some advantages using the D750, but the G80 is a mirrorless and the mirrorless is the future. The D750 is held back by its huge size because there's a mirror box and a penta, penta prism for the optical viewfinder in the camera. So what the G80 does is it rip out all these mirror parts, make it a lot smaller, and introduce better tech, right? Because there's a lot more space for all these new techs and, and improvements and upgrades, right? So of course, the G80, and the one thing from the G80, because it has uh, electronic viewfinder, does the G80 have an electronic viewfinder? I'm confused. I better check before I say things because there are things in my previous streams that I said they were so wrong. <laughs> yes, it has an electronic viewfinder. So electronic viewfinder allows you to have what you see is what you get, right? Like before you click the, sh click the shutter button, you already see the exact exposure, the results. So as you click the shutter button, that's what you get. Rather than you use, use the D750, you take a photo, you see it's underexposed, you adjust, it becomes overexposed, you adjust again, you click, 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 click. So for G80, you just get it right in the first click, right? I find that game-changing, I find it life-saving, and after I've used the electronic viewfinder, I cannot go back to optical viewfinder. Santik says, will the private live streams be published later on? Of course not! If not, why is it a members-only live streams? It will be published and made available only for members, right? Yeah. Gary, hey Gary, how are you? Gary is another Micro Four Thirds content creator. He shoots mostly with Panasonic. Uh, he has some really interesting content. Uh, Gary says, good to see you, Robin. I watched your April Fool video with Mati Solanto. That gave me a good laugh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gary. I appreciate that. Lorenzo says, hi, Robin. Question, your Olympus 240 Pro have a floating rear element when you move the lens upside down and the zoom is extended. Thank you so much. I don't remember having that, but I can't verify as well unless I checked. And uh, my 240 is not with me now, it's in another location. Uh, I don't remember it, it has any floating element, but there is, uh, what you call that? So most of Olympus lenses, they use uh, a voice coil model or VCM to move a single element in the lens for autofocus reasons. So all the lenses are not fixed. One of the glass has to move freely. That's for autofocus reasons, right? Yeah. William says, my first Micro Four Thirds camera was the EM1. I tried to upgrade to EM1 Mark III, wanted better high ISO, but it was too big. Traded for OM5, great size. I want a grip to get that EM1 feel. Recommendation? Wow, EM1 Mark III is that big, huh? I would feel that the EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III, because EM1 Mark III is actually exactly the same size and the same design as this EM1 Mark II. I thought it's perfect. I don't think it's too big. But then if you have the OM5, if you add the grip, then it's going to be as big as this. Then what's the point? It defeats, defeats the purpose of getting the OM5 in the first place, right? Yeah. 
Philip says, Hi, hello from France. Thanks to you, I rediscovered the Olympus and OM System brand. I often watch your YouTube account because your teaching skills have helped me to progress. Thank you so much for letting me know, Philip, and uh, I appreciate that you, you told me that I helped you to improve and that you found my videos useful. Rest assured that I'm doing the best I can to make as many videos and I will continue to publish content related to Micro Four Thirds or anything else generally about photography on this channel new videos every mondays and live streams every thursdays and the reason i do this live stream is so that you guys can ask me questions more directly i can respond to you right rather than you write a comment and wait for me to respond because i have to go through hundreds and hundreds of comments every single day right Squidart says, I've learned a lot listening to you and watching your channel. Most people watch you for your opinion on gear, but some of us watch you for your technique and composition. Happy to be a member. Thank you so much for the support. And I'm glad that you're not just here for the gear. I'm glad that you also care about shooting technique, shooting discipline, and also framing, composition, right? And creativity overall because photography is not just about cameras and lenses photography is about you as a photographer how you see the world how you capture the subject how you find the right moment to click the shutter button what you put in your frame right all these are very important what is the story that you're telling the emotion that you convey through your photographs these are more important than which camera that you use what settings that you use or what lens that you put on the camera definitely there are many things that i'm trying to share on this channel as well i'm glad that you recognize that and i appreciate that you support me thank you so much square that all right i'm gonna pause on the chat here and i'm gonna share a fresh batch of photographs, uh, not fresh actually, I, I've shared them before. I don't know why I said fresh, it's not fresh. So these are new photographs that uh, I, I, I'm putting out here and it's taken at Kampong Baru. Right, Kampung Baru is a very interesting location in Kuala Lumpur. If you visit Kuala Lumpur, do make sure that you spend some time checking out Kampung Baru. Kampung Baru is just adjacent to the Kuala Lumpur city center. It's very interesting because KLCC or the city center has so many skyscrapers like any metropolitan area or the tall buildings, right? And it's suddenly just next to it, there is a village settlement for the Malays. So you have all these very traditional looking houses. Some of the houses, actually most of the houses are made from wood. So they are wooden houses on stilts. And it's very interesting. So you have like a metropolitan city life just next to it. And then suddenly it's like a village rural area, but it's like in the urban center development it's just very, very, very crazy to look at it. So you have a lot of contrast of these old houses versus modern buildings. And this is technically a residential area. So you're, if you're going there, you're not exactly doing street photography because all these are houses and there's people living in these houses. So you have to be a bit more respectful if you go to these locations. But people there are so, so friendly. I've never been told off every time I took photos of portraits of strangers. And yeah, let's just look at the photographs now. Kampong Baru. So this was shot uh, on PanF <laughs> when I was testing the PanF uh, when I was working for Olympus. I have access to any gear. Ah, just want to think of some of the older times. The problem with working for Olympus, just want to rant a little bit here, is I have access to all the gear. I can use whatever I want, anytime I want, but I don't have time to use it. Right, because I have it's a day job. I work for Olympus Malaysia from Monday to Friday. Uh, there was from 2013 to 2017. I quit in 2017, so I worked for them for four years. It's Mondays to Fridays, like a day job. And on the weekends, uh, we have consumer events, like let's say the launch of a new camera. It happens on Saturday and Sunday because people don't work on Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, photo walks, workshops, anything, touch and try events, everything happens on Saturdays and Sundays. So sometimes I work both Saturdays and Sundays. Most of the time, uh, I work on Saturday and I have a Sunday off, right? And yeah, that leaves me very little time to use the camera for my own shutter therapy. And yeah, it, it's, it's like people tell me, yeah, wow, Robin, you work in Olympus. It was a dream job. Yes, it was. But it's also very suffocating because I didn't even have time to do the things that I actually love doing, which is photography. <laughs> anyway, enough of the rant. This was taken with the Pan F and the 12 F2. If you want to do this starburst, uh, the tip is stop down your aperture to as small as possible, f16 or f22, 
and dial down the exposure compensation, you have this nice starburst effect. Most Olympus lenses have this nice starburst, but if you have a zoom lens, don't zoom, stay as wide as possible. Let's say you have a 12 to 40, then go to the wide angle 12 or 14, then you'll have a nice uh, starburst. If you zoom to 40, then you don't have a starburst anymore, right? It's just some tip, you want this starburst effect in your photographs. Uh, this and this during the daytime, you can see those houses and then uh, it's like a village and there's the tall building in the background. Very, very nice uh, scene to, to witness if you are in Kuala Lumpur. That is an example of a wooden house. <laughs> there's still, there's a lot of these houses just right next to the concrete jungle, which is very, very interesting. And all this original design is still very well preserved, right? So you can still have the original feel when you look at these houses. And of course, the people there also, they also have some really nice food. And this is a uh, mutabak or it's a roti, roti with some fillings inside, which is really, really nice as a breakfast, right? And you'll see like people, all the kids playing around, playing with each other, running, riding in bikes or just running around in general. It's like a true village vibe. Yet look at the background, you have like really, really gigantic towering buildings, <laughs> which is really, really insane. Right, uh, this is some of the scenes you see as you walk by all these uh, Malay wooden houses, uh, which is pretty cool. I put the laundry out in the front and the locals here, they like to paint the houses in bright colors, which is amazing for photography. I love colors. I love Kampung Baru. There's so many colors to play with, right? And there's many cats as well because uh, for Muslims and Malays here are Muslims, they are born Muslims by default. Uh, dogs are unclean, so they are not allowed to have dogs as, as pets. So because of that, there are so many uh, cat pets uh, running around right in the village. And it's so, so, so nice to see that. And I love cats. I'm a cat person. Right. Uh, this is the way to make the roti chanai. So they'll just uh, try to stretch the bread as thin as possible, the dough as thin as possible. Roti chanai is so, 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 so nice. It's like our default breakfast here in Malaysia. Right. Just some laundry, colorful laundry at the front of the house. Right. And this is the new bridge that was just opened before, before or during COVID. I think it's during COVID. It was opened during during COVID, before COVID, I think it's before. So this is the Saloma link. It's the bridge between the Kampong Baru area and the modern uh, KLCC area. It's a very modern looking bridge. It spans a wide river and two highways. And yeah, it's, it's quite a, a marvelous structure to look at. And of course, cats again, this was shot with the, I think it's Ian Firemark 3, and the 14 f2.5 Lumix. Right, of course, I waited for something to happen and the cat yawned and I just caught the cat in the midst of the yawn. Another tip to have a more dramatic or impactful photographs, find something, some action, right? Something that the subject is doing, like whether the person is carrying something, the person is doing something, like previously, I just go back to the shot where the man is uh, doing the stretching the bread, the dough of the bread, right? Find something that the person is doing so you can capture the energy, right? So the cat is yawning or jumping or doing something or playing with each other. I don't know, just find it something and that will add the extra layer in your photograph that can make it more interesting for your viewers, right? This photograph has layers so you can see that Kelsey see the Twin Towers is at the back, that's one layer. And then there is the Saloma link in front. And then in, fr uh, in front of that, the forefront of this photograph you have people dining out uh, in, in this, this Kampong Baru area, right, in the restaurant, which is pretty, pretty cool, right? Layers, always look for layers in your photographs. And yeah, this is the view from one of the low-cost flats, uh, low-cost apartments. Uh, you have to go up to, I think, 16th floor or is it 18th floor? I can't remember. I go to the highest floor and capture this view of this concrete jungle just adjacent to this village area, just across the highways, right? So you can see the bridge in the middle there is spanning across two highways and a river, which is... For construction-wise, uh, it doesn't have any support in the middle. So construction-wise, it's actually considered quite difficult to do. It's quite a challenge. <laughs> All right, this is Kuala Lumpur where I live in, right? Which is amazing. And uh, KLCC, the Twin Towers, is definitely one of the landmarks in Kuala Lumpur. All right, 
I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, short series of photographs from Kampong Baru. That's one of the locations that I always go to shoot. People there are so friendly. Uh, in this set, I did not share a lot of portraits of strangers because strangers, they look the same everywhere. So I just want to show more of the location shots to see how that location looks like right in Kampong Baru. All right, let's get back to the chat before that, just drink some water. <laughs> hmm. Zach says, do you recommend any smaller photography YouTube channels we should check out and show our support for? Smaller channel, recently, I'm, I'm not following a lot of new channels uh, recently because of my current circle of friends, right? Like Peter Fosgat, Mati Sulanto, Rob Track, Jimmy Chang, Microphone Nerds, Emily from Microphone Nerds. Uh, I also follow Petapixel, where Chris and uh, Jordan, right? Like they release at least one video every week, right? And I don't have that much time to consume videos because I work as a full-time photographer. I do take jobs to shoot and edit and deliver shots to my clients and I make my own videos. So between that and trying to stay updated to all these channels, uh, yeah, I don't have any... I haven't followed any new channels recently. Maybe I should look around. Do you guys have any channels to do? Let me know. Hey. Anthony says, OM systems need to do more to earn the respect of Olympus users moving forward by actually making significant prudence with their new products. Yeah, but then again, like if they really have tried, if they really wanted to, I'm sure we have seen more progress by now. We would have seen uh, the fact that they are quite stagnant. It shows a lot. Well, we'll just see how long they can last. Pinnacle Pete says, many of us do our raw conversion with Olympus software, save as a TIFF and finish editing in another program. Do you find Olympus raw conversion better than others? Mm, I'm currently using Capture Pro, uh, Capture One Pro. And I'm not saying that it's better than Olympus, but there are some things that it does better. It, not everything. Uh, number one, the highlight and shadow recovery is so much better than what Olympus software is doing. That Olympus highlight and shadow is almost useless. And if you have seen what the Capture One Pro can do, especially when it comes to highlight and shadow retention, uh, or we want to, uh, let's say you are two stops overexposed or underexposed, you want to bring up the details, it does a way better job, right? Uh, in terms of colors, I would think that the Olympus conversions of Olympus software is better because it has the Olympus own recipe. But I have come to really like the colors coming up from Capture One Pro. I think the colors are okay. It's not great, uh, but it's, it's pretty good. Uh, and, and generally, the sharpening and noise reduction is also not the best if you compare with the modern software, the AI software, the denoising software. But I don't use all this denoising software. I use the Capture One's uh, default sharpening and uh, noise reduction. They work fine for me. No complaints whatsoever. I'm not paid by Capture One Pro. I'm not promoting Capture One Pro. I'm using it because it's efficient. The reason I chose it over Lightroom was because 10 years ago, Lightroom was so, such a pain to use, so slow. And it's like, oh my goodness, every click, it's like there's like a delay, right? So the Capture One Pro just responds so much faster, so much more efficient. And every second that I can save in every photo, it adds up, right? Because I have to deal with a bulk of large quantity photographs. I come back from a wedding with 3,000 photographs. So going through them is a pain. In, right? So yeah. After it says, yes, I really enjoy them. All started with the EM and 17 F1.8, 14 150, a gift from my son. I look, I took this for a cruise last year. Works well and with the new addition for a better experience. Yeah, continue to shoot with them and I'm sure you can take fantastic photographs. Paul says, I live in Kuala Lumpur. Thanks for the tip. Never been in Kampong Baru yet. Yes. So to go to Kampong Baru, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the train lines. So take the LRT, the Kelana Jaya line, the LRT Kelana Jaya line, and stop at Kampong Baru. There is a Kampong Baru stop. So it's just one stop, depending on which direction you go to. It's just one stop away from uh, KLCC station. I'm sure you know the KLCC station because that's the train station you take, right? So it's away or before. It depends on which direction, right? So it's one station uh, after KLCC. Gregory says there was a kampong across from a house in Singapore, the same juxtaposition of the traditional old world with the concrete modern world, at least in 1974. Oh my goodness. Gregory says hopefully modern Singapore has more glass. Yeah. Oh, I guess like 
it will happen to Kuala Lumpur as well. It's just a matter of time. Uh, it may happen in five, ten years. It may happen in twenty years. But sooner or later, it's just going to be urbanized, right? And all these traditional houses, they will not be there permanently. We have a super chat from Suman Nayak. Thank you so much, Suman. Do you think Oil System will ever join the L mount and give existing micro four thirds users a secondary option? I want them to join the L mount. I do want Micro Four Thirds or the OM Digital Solutions to explore full frame options, mainly because of survival. Uh, look at all full frame cameras, right? Like Nikon, Canon, uh, Sony, they are doing well. And Panasonic is also doing quite well. So for my uh, OM Digital Solutions to invest in uh, full frame, I think just to secure the future, it's not a bad idea. And with the technology and the advancement with the competition of photography, if they go into the full frame game, I think they can do very well. And it's easier to join the Elman Alliance because they already have a working relationship with Panasonic uh, rather than starting from scratch, right? Yeah, but uh, whether they will or not, I think they have tried to make it very clear many, many, many times. They have made announcements and statements saying that they will never go full frame, right? <laughs> so I think it's very unlikely this will happen. But I can wish and I can hope. One can hope. Samuel says, I shoot in RAW in 20 megapixels. I can recover highlights perfect in 50 megapixels too. But in 80, me 80 megapixels tripod, the highlights are clipped. That is strange because the 80 megapixels uh, method is the superior one versus the handheld high res shot because that's when the pixels really, really merge and you have a static shot and you get a full resolution. But it is not a true 80 megapixels. There's a reason why by default Olympus give you a 50 megapixels JPEG because using that method, I think it also depends on the optical li performance limit on your lens. I think you can get about 50 megapixels. That's the best you can get from Micro Four Thirds system at this time. That's the lens limit, right? Uh, yeah, you should be able to recover highlights. I have shot a lot of uh, tripod high-res shots. The raw files, no problem. No problem at all. Gregory says, late 60s, Port Distance was mostly rural village. But Port Distance, you can't have a contrast with the urban, like a concrete jungle, right? Like Kuala Lumpur city center. So the reason why Kampung Baru is so special is because it's just next to a concrete jungle, the city center, right? Suryo says, I'm back again with the Pan F. Congratulations. Welcome back. Santik says, I am a cat person too. Yes, cats rule, right? Yeah. Nervosis says, hi Robin. Hey Nervosis, how are you? Very nice to see you here. In one month from a noob to a semi-professional, just through your videos, thanks for all. I love my EMR Mark II. I ordered the 14 to 42 pancake and I'm looking forward to it arriving. Greetings from Germany, from Karsten. Thank you so much, uh, Nervosis. And yeah, well, I, I'm glad that you found my videos useful, that it helped you to progress in your photography experience. And yeah, I hope you continue to go out and shoot more. Nervosis says, nice pictures. Thank you so much. Suryo says, Micro Four Thirds make photography fun. And that's something that a lot of people forget, right? Because a lot of people are too obsessed with the technical perfection. They're obsessed with like high ISO resolution, which lens is the sharpest. Uh, they just want to find the best gear. They forget to have fun. And when they go out, they stress so much about the grain in the photograph. They stress about the corner sharpness. They, they stress about the photographs not being sharp enough. It's just insane, right? Like they're missing the point of photography. You should be able to go out and enjoy every single process rather than obsessing about all these technical problems, right? Yeah, you're right. Micro Four Thirds make photography fun. Paul says, after visiting Kuala Lumpur Bird Park and shooting for hours with the Sigma 100 to 400 on full frame, I switched to Panasonic G9 and Panasonic 100 to 300. Same results, but much lighter. Perhaps Carol makes you to love Micro Four Thirds. I think... Bird Park is quite accessible and it's very easy because the the walking area is all flat. Like once you actually go hike in the nature where you actually need to walk a distance and climb and you have to carry the gear with you, that's when you really appreciate Micro Four Thirds, right? I don't think the difference is so much in, in Bird Park. Yeah, the, the land area is quite large, but imagine people actually have to hike maybe one or two hours into the jungle to find a spot to shoot the birds. That's when you really treasure the Micro Four Thirds system. Lobab says, what's your opinion about Ricoh versus Fuji X100 Mark VI? 
I don't think it's fair. The Fuji, the Fuji S100 Mark VI costs like double of what the, the Ricoh is asking for. Uh, but I can give you my individual, individual opinion on Ricoh and Fuji. So the Ricoh GR, I'm assuming you're talking about GR3 and GR3X. I don't like the screen. It's very hard to see in uh, bright sunlight. In Malaysia, there's plenty of bright sun. I don't like that it doesn't have a tilt screen uh, because I do a lot of low angle and high angle photography. And I don't like that it doesn't have a viewfinder. I don't like the battery life, it's too short. I hate the autofocus system. I miss too many shots, it's not reliable. Uh, my, wow, how many years now? My 10 years old uh, EM1 or 11 years old EM1 is more reliable than the Ricoh GR. So if they can fix the, the battery issue, if they can give a tilt screen, if they can have a built-in viewfinder, if they can have uh, an improved autofocus, at least as reli reliable as the EM1, then I'll give it a chance. But so far, it is too expensive for what it's asking for. And not to forget, it has a dust system, dust problem. So people say that, oh, you know, the GR3 is so pocketable, right? Pocketable. That's the word. You can put it in a pocket, it's so compact, so tiny, yet it has FPS-C size sensor, it has a fixed f2.8 lens, right? And the image quality is amazing, I didn't deny that. But it's so pocketable, it's so small, right? So okay, I carry it in my pocket. And then you know what the people say, Robin, you cannot put it in your pocket! I was like, what? Why? Oh, that's when the dust goes into the lens! I'm like, huh? So you say it's pocketable? But you cannot put it in the pocket. What, what's with that dilemma? Like, what the, what the F? It is such a conflicted little camera. So if you want to make it pocketable, then put it in the pocket, right? If you don't want to put it in the pocket, if I want to put it in a, my camera bag, I can carry my EM1 Mark II, no problem in my camera bag. I don't need the, the camera to be that small, right? So I think that Ricoh GR3 to me is a camera that is neither here nor there. If I want a truly small camera, I have the GM1, EPM1. Yeah, if I want a larger camera to put my camera back, I have so many other choices. Now, coming back to Fuji X100 Mark VI, I did a few videos about this, so feel free to check the videos out if you have not done so. I've shared my experience about that, so I'm just gonna bring out the video. Let me see if I can find... Give me a moment. Should be able to find it. Yep, it is here. Let me just grab the link and I will go put my video here. So Lobab, look at the chat. This is my video where I actually talk about the Fuji X100 Mark VI. Uh, in summary, it is overpriced. I think it's very expensive, but Fuji got it right. They got the formula right. It has tilt screen, it has electronic viewfinder and optical viewfinder if you want. Uh, the autofocus has improved. It has image stabilization, right? The image quality is actually quite good. It's a new 40 megapixels image sensor. So yeah, but I'm not saying that it's better than GR, no. Uh, it's also not fair for me to compare with GR because I have not shot with the X100 uh, Mark VI extensively. It was just a quick 30 minutes preview of the camera, hands-on preview on the camera, right? All right, I hope that helps, Lobab. All right. Lobab says, how much in dollars is the minimum wage in Malaysia? 1,500 ringgit. So let me just do a quick conversion from Google. 1,500 ringgit to USD. How much USD is... Let's see. It's $319 per month. $319. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Let me just close this window that I'm not using so I'm not taking too much resources. Give me a moment. I'm right, just going to finish my coffee. Mm. And I should drink more water to stay hydrated. <laughs> hmm. Clemens says, Hi Robin. Hey Clemens. How are you? Nice to see you here. I always enjoy listening to your shutter therapy. Any recommendation how to deal with camera gear that is long times exposed to 45 Celsius or above? Like my camera back in the trunk of a car. Wow. I think it's fine as long as you are not shooting with it. Like cameras and lenses that can survive these temperatures. I think 45 degrees is not ridiculous. But... Um, just be careful when you take photographs or especially if you shoot a video, then there is a tendency for the camera to get overheated, right? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think the heat will cause any problem. Yeah. Zach says, nice pictures, Robin. Do you take a tripod with you on a photo? Watch? No. The reason why we use Micro Four Thirds is not to use tripods, right? 
Yeah. Nicole says, Hi Robin. Hey Nicole. Nice to see you here. Glad to see you. I use the ECG 5 grip on my OM5. When I use lenses, they are too heavy like the 40 to 150 Pro. I can remove it when I put on small prime lenses. It's a very useful product. But also it's a product that not many people is buying. And I also feel that like I, I have an EM5 Mark III, which is like 99% the same with the OM5. When I want to use the EM5 Mark III, it's e either I want to keep my uh, the camera small or I want to use it for vlogging because it is a very good, very capable vlogging camera, right? Uh, if I have larger lenses, I will just use, use my EM1 Mark II. I understand some people may not be able to buy two cameras. They can just own one camera. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but if I want to get an EM5 Mark III, I wouldn't attach anything to it. The Waza says, Hi Robin, how do you like OM tripling and quadrupling down that they are a wildlife adventure photography company? You have to admire their stubbornness. I think this will lead to their demise. I'm not kidding. It all started with EM1X, remember? EM1X was targeted towards wildlife and birds photography. And the EM1X was not a success. It was not a failure, but it was not a huge success as well. It wasn't selling like the EM1 or EM5 series, right? So they know that this is a very niche and very targeted market. And here's the problem. If OM Digital Solutions has something some features or some special capabilities in the cameras that no one has. If they have something that can help them to, to win this, this particular war or this particular battle with other camera manufacturers, then I'm, I can see they can lean forward to that, right? But here's the problem. They claim that, oh, in the OM-1, there is the advanced autofocus AI detection for bird tracking, right? Guess what? Everyone else has bird tracking autofocus. Nikon has it, Sony has it, and Canon has it. And maybe the bird detection autofocus AI tracking is better than OM systems. So what makes them special? They say they have image stabilization that helps with the hand holding of longer lens. Guess what? Canon has image stabilization, Nikon has image stabilization, and Sony has image stabilization. And if you've paid attention to what these camera manufacturers are doing, some of the image stabilization implementations are getting more and more advanced and perhaps even better than OM digital solutions. So it comes down to what? The small size. Because admit it, compared to full-frame cameras, OM digital solutions cannot win in terms of image quality, right? Sony, Canon, Nikon, they have full frame. Even the APS-C cameras, the image quality is better than micro four thirds. So we have better dynamic range, high ISO. And some people, when they shoot birds, they shoot the birds from a distance, they crop all the way down to here. So if you have like 60 megapixels, for example, if you crop all the way down here, you still have like what? 10 megapixels. If you have a 20 megapixel image sensor, you crop all the way down here, you have like what? Two megapixels? <laughs> there is a huge difference here. It's very hard to fight. I think it's a losing battle unless they come up with some special feature or let's say that they are the only one with the bird detection autofocus. No one else has it. Let's say that One Digital Solutions is the only one capable of doing uh, the, the, the AI bird tracking. They're fine. I can see where this leads to, right? Let's say that they are the only one that has image stabilization. Like previously, when they started with the five SSIS, they are the only one who, who did it. No one has it. That's why Micro Four Thirds was in front. That's why Olympus was leading the race at one point. But now everyone has powerful five SSIS image stabilization. So it all comes down to the only one advantage, right? Oh, we are smaller and lighter than everyone else. Then we look at the current cameras and lenses. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm like, wow, okay. So this is your only advantage and it's diminishing. <laughs> so yeah, if they still want to stay on this path, I'm not surprised it will lead to the demise. Zach says, I don't trust anybody that, that doesn't like cats. I'm going to steal that line someday, hey, Zach. <laughs> Mike says, Robin, you are hilarious. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate that. Richard says, love your pocketable rant. I know, right? Like, it's so conflicting, right? Like, you say it's pocketable, but you can't put it in a pocket. What, what the hell? <laughs> Chocho says, what are your thoughts about the EM10 Mark IV? I think it's an excellent camera. Uh, if you have, you're coming into Micro Four Thirds, you don't have any, any other cameras. Uh, it's the perfect entry, provided you're not doing video. If you want to do video, stay away from the EM10 series. Go to EM5 or the EM1 because it doesn't have an audio jack input, right? Uh, and it doesn't have a swivel screen. Other than that, it's, it's a fine, stills-oriented 
camera. It has a tilt screen, which I appreciate. It has built-in electronic viewfinder, which is glorious. It has powerful image stabilization. The handling is really amazing. Yeah, I think that camera for photography is amazing. It still has some really cool features like uh, live composite, lifetime. You can use all this, right? Kenny says, hi Robin, you were the main reason why I got the Micro Four Thirds. Started on an older OM10, EM10, I assume, shooting black and white film. Oh, OM10, the, the film SLR, okay. And just a few months ago, I picked up an Olympus EM5. I love it. Yeah, the EM5 is amazing. Hey, I have a new video coming up about the EM5 and why it is a wow camera and how or how desperately the OM Digital Solutions need a new WOW camera. Wolfie says, most of the OM features are no longer exclusive. High resolution and handheld high res with Panasonic, Fuji, Sony, Nikon Pro Capture with Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Panasonic, focus bracketing, Nikon, Sony, Panasonic, Sony, Fuji. Everyone has all these features, that's why. Eric, hey Eric, thank you so much for being here. And Eric, I received your super, not super chat, your direct contributions to my PayPal uh, just before the stream. Thank you so much, Eric, for being so generous. I appreciate your support and thanks for being here. Eric says, just saying hi as I zoom around for work. No worries, Eric. I appreciate that. The wizard says, you hit the nail on the head regarding the cropping of distant birds. I often end up with two or three megapixels images, right? Like imagine instead of 20 megapixels, you have 61 megapixels. Maybe you have a 10 megapixels image, which is still very, very good, right? Yeah, that's what people do with, with full frame cameras with high resolution uh, image sensor. All right, uh, time check. It is 15 minutes to midnight here in Malaysia and I have caught up with the chat. All right, I just want to remind everyone <laughs> about this new membership program on my channel. Uh, you can click the join on the membership or let me just find the link again so that it's easier for everyone. Where is the link? All right. Let me just copy the link quickly, pull into the chat section. All right, here is the link. You can go to this link, sorry. close that yes then you can use this link to join the membership of this channel and it just will cost you about a cup of coffee right 5.99 and you will receive some amazing perks three perks which other member other people wouldn't get unless you join number one early access to my videos you have 24 hours early access you can watch my new releases one day earlier than everyone else who is not a member Number two, we will have a members only exclusive live streams, right? Much like this stream, but instead of uh, talking with everyone, but it's for members only. So it's a private live stream where you have more chance to interact with me. I can answer your questions better. I can dive deeper instead of going through so many other chats and comments, right? So it's just us, members and me, right? And number three, I will prioritize your comments on all my videos. So I receive hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments every day. So if you comment, I will filter you out and I will go to your comments first before everyone else. I'll prioritize you above everyone else, right? So it's just more like uh, you can support me. It's a way for you to support me and contribute to me so that I can continue to make more videos here. I can go live streams have with a higher production quality, but at the same time, I want to give back to you. I want to interact with you more. I want to prioritize you more, right? So yeah, do consider joining this membership on this channel. All right, I have another comment here. Paul says, do you think OM or Panasonic will continue specific Micro Four Thirds lens development? Not just rebadging Sigma like the 150 to 600, but true Micro Four Thirds lenses. I thought Panasonic released quite a few uh, new lenses, uh, one of them being 9 f1.7. I know by now it's not exactly very new anymore. Uh, yeah, they haven't had any new lenses. Hey, recently, that's questionable. Yeah, Micro Four Thirds, I don't know what 
One Digital Solutions is doing. Like, I can understand them rebadging Sigma lenses because currently they may not have the capacity to design and manufacture new lenses. So rebadging a lens is the quickest way to release new lenses, right? Which is desperately needed to make sure that the, cam the company continue to release new products. But the, my only question is, or my only complaint is the selling price, the retail price for that 150 to 600 is crazy. It's more than twice of the asking price for the full frame equivalent, which is ridiculous. So yeah, yeah, I, I don't mind them rebadging lenses. They just have to keep their prices in check. But other than that, I think they still retain the expertise to manufacture or create new lenses. And I do hope they have more lenses. And I don't mind them not creating new lenses. The priority now is to update the existing prime lenses, right? We have the 12 f2, the 17 f1.8, we have the 25 f1.8, we have the 45 f1.8, and 75 f1.8. I don't mind all these lenses being updated with weather sealing. Maybe improve the optical formula a little bit, right? Or improve the construction quality. Yeah, I think that will be amazing. That will, should be the first priority because they claim that, oh, all these cameras are designed for nature and wildlife and all these places have harsh conditions, right? They have uh, rain and everything, and then all these lenses are not weather sealed. <laughs> right, so that should be the priority for them. All right. Kenny says, cheers from Philadelphia. Hey, Kenny, how are you? Thank you for dropping by. Very nice to see you. All right. There is no more comments. I guess that's it for tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Just want to check the stats. We have 107 viewers now. Oh, we have another comment. I'll answer this comment and we'll call it a night. Let's get to the comment. Set123 says, Hi Robin, I have an EM10 Mark IV. You think I should upgrade it for EM5 Mark III or EM1X? I truly love it. I have some Panasonic's like G9 and GS85, so I feel it's a little redundant. Thank you, Robin. I feel that if you have the G9 and GS85, the EM1X does not give you anything more than any of these cameras. Pretty much all the features in Email X, you can get it in G9 and GS85. If you want a true upgrade, maybe a G9 Mark II or an OM1, where you have a lot more new features like in OM1, you have like uh, what you don't have in G9, maybe the live ND, uh, maybe you have handheld high rest shot, you can't do that with G9, right? Uh, you have better features uh, like the bird uh, tracking AF, uh, which G9 doesn't have. Of course, the G9 Mark II has all these features as well, right? I feel that the Iman X does not give you any significant improvements compared to whatever that you already currently have, right? I hope that answers your question. All right, that's it for tonight. Uh, if you have enjoyed this stream, if you have uh, found my sharing beneficial, if you've enjoyed looking at my photographs, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below or you can consider to join as a member on this channel. I will really appreciate your support. All right, until the next one, I remember every Monday, new videos, every Thursday, new streams. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.